He's going to give you every single thing, every single night. Montrose Boy. Harrell is a monster. Motor, motor, motor. You don't want to fight Montrose Harrell. You throw some meat in the cage with me and in line, I bet you I come out wrong. <laughs> he has a different type of drive. He loves the game. I love this game of basketball, man. I'm blessed to be able to come out here every night, lace my shoes up, and be able to call it my job. The anger and ferocity that he plays with. I've seen guys get out the way. He's like incredible hope. People are intimidated by this guy. It's almost scary to me. Oh my God! Trez is crazy! I've had people come up to me and ask me, is he that mean? He's going to play at this level. And if you go out here and bullshit, you're going to get embarrassed. My Trez Harrell is, is going to outwork you. That guy goes and gets it every night. There's not really anybody like him in the league. The most competitive athlete I've ever coached. Ah. I came in one morning and we had a backboard that had been shattered. Trez ripped our glass out the backboard. I've never seen anybody at our practices just take the medicine ball from the ground through the hoop as if it was just a regular basketball. He checked into the game. The team he was going against, it was two players. They were like, you got him? And he was like, no, you got him. That's imposing fear right before he even steps on the court. Montrez, look out below! Oh, he plays like a monster. He's a monster. He's a Play monster. You could just tell he's one of them guys that, that wanted it. Right? You make people eat their words, the more successful you become. I think he wants to prove people wrong. I don't even know how Trez got like he got from Tarboro, to be honest with you. Why do you say that? Because nothing's there. Small rural town, everyone knows everyone. For kids growing up here in the area, there's challenges. Your schools, your churches, is basically all you really have, you know, when you're out here because we just lack resources. Athletics provided it out for a lot of young people. I mean, sports, you know, that's like really like the only thing. If you're not really playing sports, then you really ain't doing nothing after school, and that's just gonna cause trouble. It's not really a lot to get into down there. Easy to find yourself to get in trouble down there, or, you know, maybe doing the wrong thing. Growing up in, in this area is was kind of tough for a lot of the children because, you know, our area is kind of low social economics. We got a lot of kids that maybe if you take athletics out of the picture, they may not graduate high school. Athletics in this area for kids, it, it saves lives. When I first met Montrez, it was in fifth grade, and he was this just tall kid that stood out above everybody. And what really kind of struck me the most, other than him being so tall, was just, he was just very passionate. My first impression of Trez was, man, this kid is big. He was a little clumsy and wasn't very strong. He had slow feet, you know, he, he wasn't like the gifted athlete. He probably was a better competitor at the beginning than he was an athlete, but he had no quitting. A lot of kids that are in fifth or sixth grade just want to play. They don't think of the bigger picture. And he kind of had that bigger picture in mind, it seemed. Me and my buddy, we used to take him out in the yard and we used to drill him, you know, we'd play football and and basketball and, and, and baseball and just and just just try to make him an overall good athlete. A lot of people think it's easy to just well, he's just gifted, he's a great athlete, but the kid also worked really, really hard. He did not shy away from work. I couldn't find ways to to make him tired. He said, Coach, give me a second. And that second really meant, you know, grab some water, come back. What else you got for me? Every day he wanted to put the weight vest on. He would go out there and run bleachers, 20 bleachers after practice. Back then, he was a way better football player. I got him on the football field, and I was like, man, you going he, he reminded me of the Davion Clowney. I coached against Julius Peppers. I thought Trey was a better player at that level than Julius Peppers. We wouldn't let him hit the backs in practice because he hit them too hard. This guy would just shut one side of the field down. You couldn't, you couldn't throw it there, you couldn't run it there. You know, and he was just, just dominant. And so I was saying to myself, I said, oh man, I said, this guy could be a good football player until he hit the basketball, the basketball court. He 
he told me that you know that I, I, I played football because you love football. He said, but I love basketball. Basketball is my passion. My grandmother kind of got me into it. You know, she was the one that kind of you know had me pick up the game of basketball. My grandmother was always that one that bought me all those little toddler basketball goals and the ones you hang up all around the house. You know, I probably went through a million of them things. Yeah, all these little hang-up basketball goals. They used to hang all over the place, and they used to play those and dunk those, all those, stick them all over the refrigerator. I kind of watched my grandmother lose her eyesight growing up as a uh, child, and, uh, you know, that's kind of always one of the things she kind of, you know, taught me and instilled in me uh, with, you know, picking up this game, and I just fell in love with it. There was something about basketball. He would hear a ball dribble, and it was, if it was 500 yards in the distance and it was pitch black, he could pick it out and he would hear it and just it was just something drew him to that basketball. He felt that basketball could take him somewhere. He saw it as a as a as a way to get out and as a way to do something he loved doing. As a freshman, I just kept him on the team to be a uh, role player. Play the lane for us, play a little defense for us, but I got much more. <laughs> he was a leading scorer, leading rebounder, leading shot blocker as a freshman. Freshman to sophomore year, there was a huge leap. From sophomore year to junior year, he was starting to put it together. He just dominated basketball games. People just come, they, they wanted to see who this Montreal Herald kid was. The levels of excitement when he was playing here, the gym was packed. The atmosphere here was just, best word I can say is electric. His junior year, he came back with all the attention and he understood who he was. I mean, I think he put up 24, 14, and right at nine and a half blocks. He didn't take it for granted like some people. You know, I'm good at it, so I'm just going to go through the motion. He, he was a student of the game. When no one else was in this gym working, Trey stayed right up the road. He would be in here working. It would be phone calls. Coach, you think you can get over to open gym for me? We had this, this big old medicine ball. I had a drill where he had to put that thing on the backboard 20 times. 20 times on this side and 20 times on that side. And I can remember the practice when he did it. And uh, he looked at me, oh, that's all you got? And where the guys around him that was in his group were looking at him like, are you crazy? The community, they, it was tough. It was rough on this guy. There was a lot of people that were uh, jealous. He was being nationally recruited by a lot of colleges, you know, it was, all, it was some jealousy, it was some envy. You see that tremendous size and they treated him as if he was already a professional or he was a college athlete and the expectation level sometimes was just, they were through the roof. They didn't think big picture or they wouldn't take the time to look at, hey, this is a kid. You could hear people in the stands, you know, he ain't the only player on the team and stuff like that. And it came from adults, not kids. Being 14, 15 and, and being picked at, it take a good person to walk away. Who like Trez, look man, you going somewhere. You gonna be somebody. Don't let this stop you. He just kind of always felt like, like that underdog, the people counting him out in, in, in high school. The people that didn't quite ride the Trez train when he was here. You know, so he, he, he was like, you know, he remembers all that stuff and that stuff he used as motivation. You have a chip on your shoulder, you keep your chip, rural North Carolina, no one knows about you, no one cares. Negativity, we just use it as motivation, man. I say, I, I just told him, look, it's always gonna be negative people in the world. What you gonna do about them being negative? You use this for motivation. You make yourself the best player you can make yourself. He got through it and, uh, and he made it out. I ended up going to a school to where you know they had just made a Final Four run, and uh, they already had a great team. I just wanted to do any and everything I can to put myself in position to be able to play and get them the floor. He's just so hungry to to not only win the game, but to outshine his opponent. He takes it very personal. Trez is probably my favorite big when he was in college. He just played with reckless abandon. He was fearless and he had a motor out of this world. He's always on the same page with me because we were all about one thing, winning. And that's what he's all about. 
We were playing in the Big East Finals. We were down at halftime against Syracuse. Arden Williams bears alone in the corner. A three! And a 15 point Syracuse lead with under a minute to go in the half. What an impressive first half by Syracuse. And we went to Montrez. Save into the lane. Underneath for the dunk by Hill. He had like five incredible dunks. We wound up winning comfortably. What stuck out was Montrez's game that night. They scored their last eight points. Montrez once again rose to the occasion. When Coach asked me to do something in this game, I wanted to do it. I played especially hard. I played my heart out in this game. The day he was drafted, you know, it was kind of bittersweet. We had this big draft party back here at home. You know, we had all our friends and family there. When he was coming up, it, it was kind of still a time where you tried to fit these guys in a box, right? You didn't just look at them as a basketball player. He's kind of just a runner, dunker, offensive rebounder. He can, you know, push it a little bit, handle a little bit, but he's kind of a center who's six eight and doesn't shoot threes. And does, so, so, what does he do? He's thinking that he's going in the first round, and uh, as the first round rolls down, you know, they're calling these guys guys' names you never heard of, and he's just sitting there like what is going on as the first round ended. He was upset, so he just walked out. He felt like he should have been a, a lottery pick. With the 32nd pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Montrez Harrell. With the uh, second pick in the second round, Houston Rockets pick Montrez Harrell. And he wasn't even in, in the room. A little bit of disappointment, but it meant the world to everybody that was at that draft party. You know, he didn't play the first couple years in Houston. It did look like a time where he could potentially just fizzle out of the league, you know, quickly. Lou William was always one of the guys that was telling him, one of the veterans saying, hey, look, I seen plenty of young players who've gotten the league, they wasn't playing, they were down on themselves, and, and they were out the league. He always told Montrez, keep your confidence up, be ready, stay ready. He used to ask the coaching staff, like, send me down to the G League. He wanted to play. He wanted to get better. Cummings puts it up there off the glass. Oh, my God. Oh, and he puts it down. You have to credit him for, for not giving up. Blocked by Montrez. Now Montrez has it. Going in the other direction. And he jabbed it. You put the challenge out there, Trey's gonna put the work and the effort in to get good at what he do. Playing in Houston, I think it was a good learning experience for him, but at the same time, it made him more hungry to get on the floor and be in a rotation. Oh, Montrez Harrell! Harrell! The monster slam! He persevered, got into a great situation here with the LA Clippers. His career just took off. He came in, he, he didn't play a lot in Houston, so he, he started playing more and more with us. Once he got that opportunity yeah, to play in LA, yeah, yeah. it's like we all knew it was coming. coming, in. coming in, yeah. Flex. I just wanna win. Yeah. Once you give somebody a chance to do something and something they love to do, they'll show you. And uh, he's been showing them ever since he's been there. He has skill, he has IQ, he's unselfish, but his best characteristic is his motor and his heart. Looked at that trade and, and you thought, who are these guys, right? And it was Lou, and it was Bev, and it was some guy named Harold. He's the energy guy, he's the hustle guy, he's the heart guy, and then he's an easy guy to get behind. He puts his hands in the air saying, are you not entertained? Putting on a show, guys. The fans can see it, you know, it's just like, you know, you out there, the fans, can, they know you're giving it your all. After plays, he's screaming, he's getting the fans all, you know, all up in arms. And I hear it a lot from fans, you know, even when I'm coming off the court. <laughs> they just constantly telling me thank you, thank you, you know, for the hard work and the way that you play the game and, you know, how you just leave it all on the line. For them to actually see that and appreciate it, it means a lot to me. I met Trez probably when he came in the league. He was like me, you know, one of them young guys that really love the game and, and work hard. And, you know, he had no straight path, a good path like some of these guys. You know, he got to work a little harder. He's just a ball of holic. Look at him through the summer. He's playing in about five or six different, you know, summer leagues. He really takes pride in going different places, going different cities, and in hooping. <laughs> no 
no matter what happens, every year rolls around, there's going to be a new 60 coming in to take my job. I look at it as I want to keep working. I want to keep expanding my game. I want to keep growing. I'm going to keep building. This past summer, it was the best summer he's ever had. He just came to UCLA. He used to come and play pickup with Trevor Ariza, Bobby Brown, and all those guys. He normally never worked out. He would just go play pickup. Now he's added the workout part to his game. He always came in like, you know, six o'clock in the morning, ready to go. So I think it's going to take his game to another level. Each year, it seems like he adds more and more to his game. I look at getting better at you know, a skill set. Some people kind of get into this game and kind of get content with just happy with being here. I work my tail off to be able to get where I am today. I, you know, don't take that for granted. He started adding floaters and touch shots and uh, ability to play out of dribble handoffs and to be able to, you know, get downhill as a ball handler and change direction. He has a vivid basketball imagination as far as seeing different things on the court. Montrez pops an entry to the house. Oh my! Oh, nasty! Really a pick and roll. Perfection! Will to Harrell and Trez locks the rim. You don't see nobody else really doing the things that Trez do when, when Trez is in his mode. That pick and roll coming off the bench with, the, with him and Lou Williams, I think, is going to get even more lethal the more he continues to expand his game. The whole energy of the court changes when those two guys come out. Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell have a special connection out on the floor. Those two work so well together. Home run hit is coming off that bench, and Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, as good as it gets. He likes coming off the bench as well. I, I would assume the fact that he's been playing with Lou probably is the reason for that. He's one of those guys that, you know, I kind of just wanted to be around, kind of learn how he do things, how he go about himself, how he took coming off the bench, and how he took uh, just, you know, approaching the game as a pro each day. He's going to his 15th year, you know, and if I'm blessed to be able to do something like that, man, that's an amazing feeling, man, because, you know, for 15 years you've been around and been able to, you know, put your hat on and put your shoes on and go to a job that you love doing every day. He comes off the bench, he works as hard as he can, uh, gives you every single minute that he's got. I think people think that Trez is good only because of Lou. They're starting to see Trez is good, period. There's nothing else after that. Trez behind the defense. Oh, we have liftoff. He just attacked the rim. Montrez Harrell having a sensational season. He's becoming too fast for bigs, too strong for guards. Watch my boy face up. Uh, uh, drunk legs and yoke bit. Oh my God, Trez, chill out. Okay, you did that, talk to yourself. I love it, Trez. Trez is a dog, he's a big guard. Montrez Harrell continues to evolve as a player. He's got the complete package and, and he's got a niche um, for this league. Those are the guys that, that do well when they know what they do and they do it at a high level. He started off a second round pick. For him to get to that point, to now being one of the premier six men in the league, I think he's taking that next step in his game. He's not just a hustle player. He might be undersized in, in actual physical ability, but his heart is 7-1. Is, is, is he's heard all that. You know, he's heard that he's undersized. He doesn't have a true position. He's been overlooked in a lot of situations, and uh, every time he steps on the court, he just proves people wrong. look back over his journey, the biggest thing that sticks out to me is the amount of hard work that he poured into this thing. Good hardworking people held him to a standard and said, if you want this, you got to go get it. Ain't nobody going to give it to you. If you see those dirt roads and know where he's from, you'll be like, okay, I see why this guy's played so hard so much. I think some of his determination to do better and to get away came from knowing you have to do better for your family. Where we're from, nobody's supposed to make it out. There's some things that we weren't supposed to see at that early age, but knowing that we didn't want those things to happen for us, we didn't want our family to have to worry about those things later on down the road, you know, it kind of built us to work harder than I think most would around that area. He took some of those lessons that his dad gave him and he's applying it to himself now. He's an awesome dad. His kids are all his world. 
Yeah, he's fierce and competitive on the court, but off the court, he's just as fiercely competitive to be a great dad. Just being able to, you know, leave a great legacy for them to be able to see and just know that, you know, hey, that was my dad. That stuff motivates him to play at the level that he plays at right now. He wants to be talked about as one of the best. As I'm evaluating, you know, younger prospects and, and sitting down with kids or talking to scouts, people are saying maybe this guy can be the next Montrez. And, you know, that's huge to have that type of impact uh, on, you know, up and coming prospects and, and really the game. He's the same kid. He's just, he's grown into a man. He's the same kid. He's going to play hard every day, every minute. Every second he's out there, he's going to give you everything he got. To go from not having anything and, and, and to get where you're at now by just doing the checking off these important boxes, it gives the one around here the chance to say, hey, if Trez can do it from where he came from, why can't I? Someone came from a small town, small community, and they made it big. Montrez Harrell does the race. He's a monster professional. Montrez Harrell, monster Trez. He continues to expand and get better. Montrez, what a monster move. Trez does it again. You haven't even seen like really what's next for him. I think he's going to continue to improve. I think he's just scratching the surface of who he really, really is. This game has evolved a lot. The sky's the limit for him. This is Logo Dane. I have to step up. So now when I step up, it, now he got to think more. Dame, Dame doesn't have to think if he comes off that screen and pull up. Now he got to think more. Now Trez go, corrals it, plays it, flat, boom. Now I'm, I'm glassing, glass.com. Come on, man. I'm telling you, man, Trez is a dog. I love Trez. You want a big man like that. You need a big man like that. You need a big man who got straight skill, finesse, and you need a dog. And Trez is a dog. I'm a dog, bro. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Trez is a dog, you know, and we um, all feed off his energy. Hey, watch Trez go crazy. Uh, cross over, spin more lane. Trez, chill out. Big guard. Just scared me. <laughs>